And then there are the long-standing issues, the root causes. And I'm thinking of corruption, violence, and poverty, the lack of economic opportunity, the lack of climate adaptation, and climate resilience. Vice President Harris, in her role working to address the root causes of illegal immigration, drawing a line connecting uh, the migrant surge to, at, our, at our southern border to climate change. Well, we're also working on some math. Deportations down last month as illegal border crossings continued to soar. Let's discuss these ideas with former HHS Assistant Secretary of Legislation Matt Bassett. Good to have you back, Matt. Thanks for having me, Shannon. So what do you make of what the uh, vice president had to say there? We've long known that there are issues of poverty and corruption, those kinds of things that often, um, you know, will motivate people to seek a better life somewhere else. But there has been this in in increased conversation about climate change as well, that it's affecting crops and the ability to earn a living and those kinds of things. What do you make of that? Well, Shannon, I think the vice president herself and the American people would be better served instead of giving speeches to like-minded audiences in D.C. that she actually boarded Air Force Two and went down to the border to talk to the communities that are so adversely affected as a direct result of their border policies. And I suspect that if she did and if she actually spoke with immigrants making the trek, that no one would tell her they walked 1,200 miles on foot to get to our great country because of the weather. She is going to travel to the region. Uh, our Kristen Fisher reporting from the White House earlier tonight. Um, so far, we don't have an indication that she's going to the border itself, but we'll be in Mexico and Guatemala, I believe, are the two countries that she is planning to visit to see what's going on. In the meantime, uh, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki had to say this uh, on Tuesday about the border and how we got here. After coming into office, uh, our administration immediately jumped into action to address the influx of migrants at the border, something that began during and was exacerbated by the Trump administration. You were part of the administration, Matt, so how do you answer that charge? Well, this president uh, inherited the most secure border in American history. Uh, and the societal costs that are being borne as a result of their policies. Just take, for example, the children that were in HHS's care when I served. CBP is predicting 187,000 unaccompanied minors will present themselves this year. The American people need to understand that the Office of Refugee Resettlement will place these children that they can with either a parent or a near relative. That takes time. And the average census with us is 30 days. In temporary facilities, it costs over $1,000 a day. So just so folks understand the math, you're talking about 30,000 per child times 187,000 children. That is $560 billion only for the children that are protect, projected to come this year. Mm -hmm. Speaking of math, I quickly want to ask you before we run out of time, this idea about ICE deportations, the Washington Post reporting, and we've confirmed these numbers as well. ICE deportations fell in April to the lowest monthly level on record, uh, despite the fact that illegal border crossings were made at a 20-year high. Quickly, what do you make of that math? Well, there's a lot of discretion the administration has as to who goes and who stays. And clearly, this administration is not prioritizing deportations. 80 to 90 percent of people who present at the border will not have a legitimate claim. They're told to show up at a court date at a future hearing, almost on the honor system, hoping that they will. So the message that they're sending to the Southern Hemisphere is that if people can get to this country, clearly they're allowing them to stay. Well, and we're hearing that from Democratic members. Uh, I think of Congressman Henry Cuellar down there in Texas. Uh, he is on the front lines of this. His constituents are as well. It's not just a partisan issue, as we have a growing number of Democrats saying to the Biden administration, uh, we got to get a handle on this. These are human beings. Uh, cartels and smugglers and coyotes are having a field day with real human lives. Uh, this is something that requires action regardless of party. And so we hope Washington can get it together. Matt, thank you for stopping in to have this conversation with us. Thank you, Shannon.